a farmer who whistles while she works, and a dog that loves his job. And there you go, he's gone over the hill. And you see the sheep's heads. I don't know where the dog is, but I can tell because of their ears, the sheep's ears, where that dog is. See, there he is. Look, there he just he came is, yeah. up over the hill. I find that beautiful. I love yeah. that. That's why it's my passion. Yeah. In Great Britain, uh, the shepherds there needed dogs to help them too, and so the great dogs that were of use would be bred together. Um, but basically, the border collie in the pack of dogs was the ones that would gather the prey together while the others went in for the kill. So those are the ones that were then incorporated into the farming operations. Not the killers, but the gatherers. And so now the, this breed is working in partnership with the handler or the farmer uh, to go gather that stock and bring it towards us. What's the most common situation you see with herding dogs in Virginia? Is it with sheep? Is it with cattle? Is it used occasionally to load the animals? Or is it trialing? In a, in a competitive? Probably because I, I do trial. I'm, I'm in the thick of it. Um, I see it most often that way. I'll, as for me, when I started out, I, I had a need um, because I had a bunch of sheep. They had foot rot. I needed help. And so I got a border collie and I uh, went to clinics and learned how to train that dog and used it desperately on the farm. Then I wanted a social life. And I saw a sheepdog trial, and so I got hooked and was, you know, went to the dog trials. Well, the same happens with the cattle farmer. They've got cattle dog trials to go to the, the, uh, the, the sheepdog, uh, the sheep herders also the same thing. They often get involved, and so these dogs are not only a farm dog, but a trial dog. The best ones, in fact, are farm dogs and trial dogs. What are the most common breeds in Virginia? Border Collies. Um, obviously, I'm biased <laughs> towards border collies, but there are uh, Australian shepherds, there um, Australian cattle dogs. Those are pretty much and bearded collies. Some people will breed a bearded collie to a border collie. And while our dog trials, our border collie trials, are open to any breed, the border collie is a kelpie. I'm sorry, I forgot a kelpie. The border collie and the kelpie are the only ones that show up. Okay. I have to think that it would be a thrill to see an animal that you have perhaps bred and trained and traveled 2,000 miles with and you put them into a competition and they perform flawlessly. I'll let you know. <laughs> no, I love it. it um, oftentimes when I do really well at the top dog trials, uh, it, it's still not a flawless performance, but it is a thrill. It's wonderful. It keeps us going back. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any financial sense. We just do it because we're hooked. How do you reward the dog? Allow them to go keep working. That's all they want. And so many times after you finish a run, you try and call your dog over and pet it, and it is focused on the sheep or the cows. That's it. Just let me have them, Dad. <laughs> let me have them, Mom. Take another step. Yeah. He's going on a big, long loop here. Because he doesn't want to get them running. I don't, I don't want mm -hmm. him to run. If he ran my livestock around, they would lose weight. So I want him to come in and see how he, he gears down when he's beginning to get to the first couple of steps. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Nice and easy. Just get him going quietly. Don't run him around. Verbal commands, are they universal? Would a, would a verbal command in Montana be the same as it is in Virginia? There are some slight variations. If I want the dog to move in a counterclockwise motion, what will I say? Way to me. Way to me. Okay. Yes. And if I want it to go in a clockwise motion? Come by. Some people say go by. Okay. If the flock is across the field and I want the dog to go bring the flock to me, what would I say? You could use either way to me or come by. So regardless of the direction, it still means go out and, and get the get flock and bring them to me. Right. 
All right. If I want you to freeze, hold the flock right where you are. I would say lie down or give it the lie down whistle. I accept a stand for my dog. Some people will accept a slow down. So you'll, you'll hear them say, lie down, and then the situation changes and they need to keep going or move a, a particular direction. And so a person watching a dog trauma, I go, boy, that's a terrible dog. Did you see it never did lie down? But it was because that's how the trainer actually trained it. Explain how the whistle is used. I use this to project the commands at a great distance. A stern whistle means go faster. Uh, a light whistle means easy as, easy as you go. Everybody has different whistles. My low whistle, and I'll have a ding ding on that at the end of that because out west you can't hear a low whistle you know, in the wind and so far away. That, that last one was a turn in, a there. Turn in. Uh-huh. I have to walk up. He's just supposed to walk just towards him, not get, flank get around him, but walk to up. Him. A little way to me. Now, I haven't given you the come by yet. Okay. So here it is. My come by starts high, because I don't want the dog to confuse. So one side starts low, the other side starts high. That's and, common with most. He immediately went clockwise uh -huh. and brought them in. And I'm going to get them opposite of each other. Come by is to is clockwise. clockwise. You know, we have gloves that. Do you <laughs> red and green? I was no, from the no, Navy. No, I was they the red and green. Have come by on the top of the glove. Oh, and some come shirts by. would come by on this sleeve and way to me on this sleeve. Way to me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> come by, way to me. <laughs> Port and starboard is there. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Ellie, here, lie down. And now I want the dog to go out and to gather the flock and bring it to me, and I want it to go in a clockwise direction. So what I'm going to say is, come by and the dog is going to ignore my commands. <laughs> because, Don't take that personally, Because, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not its master. I, yes. I'm not. So go ahead and give that dog the command to go in a clockwise Clock. direction. Come and by. Immediate response. Fascinating. And it's going to go in a wide arc. The dog is not to affect the sheep until it gets to the 12 o'clock point, the balance point, which is directly on the other side. We're 6 o'clock, dog's 12 o'clock. It's driven to bring them in a straight line to us. So you see he goes right and he goes left, tuck in the right side, the uh -huh. left side, bring him straight. Now, we're going to ask him to, to flank now. So we're going to go counterclockwise to demonstrate. Counterclockwise is going to be... Way to me. Way, way to me? Way, way, walk up. That's to walk directly towards him, walk up. Okay, and if walk I want to freeze everything, put on the brakes, lay down. Lie down, lie down. You really have total control over these animals yes. with this valuable tool. Yes, if I need to take some of these, come, some of these back and doctor on them, I could separate out so I don't have to take the whole flock to the barn. If you wanted to separate the black one out, just one animal. That one. Can okay. you do that? It's actually why I keep black sheep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't cheat. Lie down. You lie down. We lie down. Lie down. Grant, Grant here. Here, 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 come. Look, come by. Lie down. Lie down. This, Grant, come, 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 ah, ah, way here, good dog, down, Grant, that'll do, lie down, way, walk here, this, 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 good dog, good dog, get up, way, easy, La ah, come on, atta boy, Grant, <laughs> good boy, good dog. Look at that. All right, lie down. Look. And that's amazing. It you know it took two or three minutes to, but 
you know, yeah. in, in the big picture for a farmer, that's... Right. In competition, we're not, they're not allowed to touch them. <laughs> okay, okay. But on the farm... So now he's going to put them back together? I, yeah, I asked him to go back and okay. get those. Yep. Can I purchase a Border Collie puppy and go on YouTube and look for training videos and train that animal myself? You really can hardly replace going and learning live. Probably the best investment you make is with a trainer. Yes. Yes, I would say so. And if you wanted to get in uh, quickly, buying a older dog that somebody else is retiring uh, is a great way. That way you can focus on your mistakes, learning yourself while the dog takes care of you. Okay. Now, I go out and I purchase a Border Collie puppy and I bring it to you to mm -hmm. train. Mm -hmm. How long is it going to be with you? First off, you wouldn't bring to me that Border Collie puppy until it is about 10 months to a year of age. It needs to have um, physical maturity, mental maturity before coming. Uh, I would uh, grill you on the way you need to raise that dog before it gets to me, uh, certain expectations, because I don't want to have to spend my time undoing uh, the bad habits that it may uh, come up with. Mm -hmm. while, while rearing. Um, so I have a minimum of three months. That customer, that client, they're going to have a fully trained working dog. It would depend on the dog. Not all dogs uh, are capable of doing this. Um, so some of them would flunk out and usually I can tell you within two weeks whether uh, it is no longer economically feasible for your dog to be here. <laughs> are there good books or other resources that you might recommend for novices like myself? who you know, maybe just want to get into this as a, as a lifestyle. Yes, there are wonderful resources. Um, the United States Border Collie Handlers Association, the uh, United States Border Collie Club, and the American Border Collie Association, which is our registry. All three of those have fabulous uh, websites and uh, ways for you to be able to, to uh, plug into those resources. Sticking with the Border Collie, what's one thing about this breed that people don't know? They are looking for something to do all the time. And unfortunately, a person who may get a Border Collie puppy and think it's going to make a great pet doesn't devote enough time to give it activity and keep it busy. So the dog creates its own activity. It might be moving the furniture, rearranging the house. <laughs> Uh, gathering up all the children in the park, or, or the cars. Uh, so many of them chase cars because they're trying to control anything that moves. That'll do, that'll do. So when we leave and all the work is done, mm -hmm. Is the animal going to come in your home? This animal? Not or? that muddy animal. Okay. <laughs> that one would have to be hosed off and dried off completely before coming in my house. But a lot of people do have their border collie, their working dog, as their pet. As that their can pet. be done. That's okay. Yeah. In okay. fact, I think the working dog would make a better pet than the border collie that doesn't have the work. Right. Yeah, I they're see. hyperactive, okay. always trying to figure out something to do. Now let's see how he responds. Uh -huh. It's good. Oh, okay. He's a friendly guy. Yeah, I'm yes. a dog person, and you know that. <laughs> yeah, right behind the ear. Kinda. That's it. Yeah, oh, boy. yes, good huh, massage. Huh. Now let's see if you'll listen to me. <laughs> Try it. Go ahead. Come by. Come by. Give a shush and see what he does. Shh. Shh. He knows my shush from your shush, doesn't he? <laughs> Susan Rhodes farms in Clark County, Virginia. Working dogs changed her life. Hurry, hurry. Come on, George. Come on, George. Tell me about this dog. This is my right-hand man, George. He works with me every day here on the farm. Anything that needs to be moved or, or done, he comes out and helps me with. DuPont was my first uh, Border Collie. I bought him to be a competitive obedience dog. I had never dabbled in herding, didn't even know it existed. In my contract with the woman that bred him, she wanted him to go to livestock at least once to see if he had instinct because she didn't want to breed the instinct out of the dog. And so when I took him to the sheep, the glow in his eyes when he went around and laid down on the other side of the sheep, it just said, this is what we were meant to do. So I became determined to get my own place and um, be able to compete, you know, at the bigger trials and on a national level. And 
I moved out of a condominium <laughs> to come live on 70 acres and work seven days a week because of a little dog named DuPont. So it sounds to me like you bought a Virginia farm because of a dog. Yes, for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've been into it and you're, you're now a professional trainer. First of all, tell me the distinction between a guardian dog and a herding dog. Um, your herding dog moves livestock around. His instinct is to, to move the livestock and uh, you just train him to move where you want him take them so that you know you can move from one field to another you can uh, take them to food you can take them to water your guardian dogs live with the livestock and their job is to protect them the herding dog is going to work with the person the guardian dog is going to work on his own so would you necessarily have both dogs you and could with my guardian dogs they have learned that my border collies can come in with the livestock when i'm here and that it's not a stranger you know that it's not um, going to hurt the livestock are there any cases where you shouldn't think about working dogs? When a farmer goes to get a, a dog, he needs to figure out pros and cons. The dog can go get that livestock, bring it to him, but he's going to have to also know that when he's not working the dog, the dog needs to either be supervised, trained to stay away from you know, the rest of the livestock, or have his own you know, kennel to be put in. That would be the thing. Is, is he going to be able to give the dog enough work? or is the dog going to become a problem when he is doing something else besides working the livestock? Back up to the farmers who are considering getting their very first working dog. Where do they go? Are you buying this animal online? Are you looking at trainers online? My suggestion would be to ask around at your feed store. They're gonna know who owns what uh, and find yourself a reputable breeder uh, if you want to start with a young dog. But when you start with the young dog, you're going to have to go to someone like myself or, or a few other people that will train you to train your dog. Uh, another way you might go is to buy a trained dog. And again, you can uh, just talk to your local feed store, a place like that, that know who's got dogs for sale and who's training them and selling them. Um, because it, it's not intuitive it's not the you know when you go out to train the dog the dog's idea of what's right and yours are probably two different things so a trained dog is not a bad thing to have tell me about border collies i have heard that they are one of the most intelligent animals on the planet i think they are um, they act uh, probably you could train them to the words of a four-year-old they can you know they learn their directionals they learn to work with whistles um, Sometimes with the older dogs, you go out there, they know what to do probably as well as I do, that they don't need my directions. What would you want farmers to know who have never owned a working dog? What's, what's the most important thing that they should know? That they can make your life a whole lot easier. Um, they can go over acres to where you cannot see the dog once they learn their job and get together your livestock and bring it in. A good dog will get their stragglers. I mean, they'll bring every one of those uh, sheep or cows, whatever it may be, to your feet. Tell me the story of how you met Tom. I met him at a sheepdog trial and just uh, run into him there all the time and come to find out he lived just down, he's 45 minutes from me. We became friends and he comes out and helps me with trials and uh, he works with my niece and helps her train her dog. Lie down. Wait. Right there, lie down. Hey! Come. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to give her instructions. Okay. How do you use border collies on your farm? Well, everything I do with stock, I do with dogs. I don't have to go get anything. The dog does that. And if I go out in the field, if I want two or three sheep, I don't take 40 or 50 to the barn to get them. I take what I want. This to me shows the value mm -hmm. of a good herding dog because I have seen cattlemen chasing mm -hmm. their own cows, their Oops. own animals, and the cow is going to react in 
18 different ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes go through a fence. Mm -hmm. These these animals are not agitated at No, nope, the dog is being very kind to them. If she has to, she can get in and be more forceful. But the goal is to, to get them to think it's their idea of where they're going. But Tom is managing this mm -hmm. 15 yeah. yards away. Yep. And he's, you know, I've seen him in trials do it much further away. I got the uh, border call this in 77. They're fetching dogs. They bring everything to you. And then you got to teach them to drive away from you because they don't want to do that. Now, the Australian Shepherds and the Heels, they're driving dogs. They want to drive everything away from you. But they do too much barking and biting. So do you train your dogs or do you have them trained by someone else? I don't know anybody could train a dog for me. <laughs> I know a lot of good trainers, but they couldn't train one for me. And why is that? Because they don't train a work a dog like I do. You remind me, Tom, that every farm in Virginia is different. Oh, yeah. And everybody in knowing them farms is different. And every dog has to meet different expectations. Oh, yeah. Now, they're not going to want to go into this pen because it looks like a trap. It would be similar to loading them onto a trap. Mm -hmm. OK, that's going to be a challenge. Yeah, because it is. That's going to be a squeeze. Let's and see. this takes a good dog and a good livestock person. And that's where Tom's got all those years of experience where he can read those cows and know basically what they're going to do before they know what they're going to do. And there's going to be some teamwork here, probably, when you see Tom moving a little bit. He's got to work his side while Pris works her side. And you'll see all the patience in the world. And the trick is to not put your dog in a position that it can't get away from the cows. Here we go. We very rarely ask them to go between a fence and a cow that, you know, that they can't get away. I noticed Tom there hadn't even broke a sweat. No, and that's the beauty of the dog. He makes it look easy, and it's not. So Tom Farmer comes to you and says, you know, I've bought a piece of ground, and, and I want to have a flock of sheep, and I want to have a working dog. What do I do first? You watch it work. And if it don't work like you want it, well, then you look at another one. Oh, they all dogs are different. Even dogs within the same breed. You can take a litter of pups, six or eight pups, they're going to be six or eight different. Ain't no two going to be alike. Hmm. So you've just got to pick one that you like. And if you like a dog, you'll do more with it than if you have one that you don't like. Just like every farm is different. Oh, yeah. Every working dog is oh, different. Yeah. Oh, they all work different. Working dogs on Virginia farms, they work hard and they love their job. You can't ask for a better partner on the farm. Ninety years ago, the Virginia Farm Bureau made our local farmers a promise to protect and preserve a way of life they work so hard to establish. We want to keep Virginia, Virginia. Anyone can be a Farm Bureau member, and there's a local Farm Bureau in every county. More information is at vafarmbureau.org. Virginia soybean farmers are hard at work growing soybeans to produce products you use every day. Candles, soaps, even crayons can be made from soybeans. Remember, when you buy soy, you're helping to support American jobs, the economy, and our nation's energy security.